Fielder calling balls and strikes. ND Chavez in the box, and we're underway. Blackburn flips the corner, strike one. Chavez a hit in four at bats last night. Very speedy hitter, and of course, this series has lost a little bit, bit of its star power with Maurer not playing for the Twins and Ishiro not playing for the Mariners. Well, Chavez, a guy that likes to bunt, greedy at third, playing in in front of the third base bag, and also Justin Morneau at first because Chavez, that type of bunter, he likes to take that ball with them sometimes down toward that first base line. Breaking ball misses and it's two and one. Well, we talked about the sinking fastball of Nick Blackburn. He also has that hard slider, the curveball, and the changeup. 39 walks in 193 innings, so he throws strikes. And there's that two seamer that'll work back over the plate. Clocked at 92 miles per hour on your screen, two and two. Driven to right. And a one hop skip to span, and Chavez is aboard with a leadoff single. Well, he left that pitch up a little bit. After trying to keep the ball down, Chavez more of a slap type hitter. And that's what he needs to do to get on. Just kind of reaches out and pokes that ball in the left field. Now Chavez over 2,000 at bats has only 17 home runs. So you can see that's the type of hitter he is, just a slap type hitter. And in Blackburn's second season, the Twins hope that the starts will be about the same. You can only maybe add one more start to that, but that the innings pitched will be elevated over 200. Called strike to Franklin Gutierrez. Gutierrez hit a pretty good pitch last night for a big a two run home run for the Mariners, just beyond the reach of Carlos Gomez in center. I thought Francisco Lariano pitched an outstanding ball game last night, made really one mistake in his feeling was that breaking ball he left up to Ken Griffey Jr. You have to tip your hat when Gutierrez really kind of golfed that ball out, and you know, Carlos Gomez almost caught that ball in straightaway center. Two strikes to Gutierrez. Liriano didn't walk a batter, and I think the Twins getting seven innings from Liriano would like to take that another 33 times this year. Two strikes to Gutierrez. Gutierrez doesn't go after the breaking ball. Yeah, that's, that, that's that hard slider down and away. What Blackburn's trying to do right here with that slider or the sinker, get a ground ball. Chavez at first base, even though he has good speed, not much of a base stealer throughout his career. Chop foul at the plate. Remember last year, too, teams almost never tried to run against Blackburn. So quick to the plate. And so Chavez, who's spent most of his career in the National League, of course, trying to figure out the delivery of Blackburn. You can see just uh, 31 double play balls. Just Mark Burley induced more ground ball double plays last year than Blackburn. One and two again to the Seattle center fielder and there goes Chavez and the pitch lifted foul over the Seattle dugout. Well, maybe a little hit and run a tough uh, pitch sometimes for a base runner to uh, to run on with two strikes because Gutierrez has to protect the plate. You know what that does you see you saw her excuse me uh, Casilla move to second base so it leaves that big hole at second base. And Gutierrez fouled it off. Chavez goes again. The pitch driven to the right field corner. And that ball is a fair ball. Stays in the ballpark. Chavez will be held at third. And the Mariners have a threat here with a single backed up by a double. Well, Gutierrez, we talked about it last night. A young man that really didn't get steady playing time for the Cleveland Indians. And he's going to get that here. A two run home run last night. And takes his fastball the other way. A mistake by Blackburn because Blackburn needs to keep the ball down in the strike zone. Ball stays in the ballpark span gets it back in but Gutierrez with his first double of the year. Hey we don't know where this inning's going to go but that's 
nice little play by Span on the right field corner. Remember last night he played in the other corner, and the, the right field corner a tricky one here at the dome with that short foul fence. Here's Griffey, second and third, nobody out. And Morales has to sprawl to catch ball one. Griffey started phase two of his Seattle career with a home run last night. Hooking one down the line in right field. Off speed pitch, tap foul. Yeah, phase one from 1989 to 1999 with the Seattle Mariners, 11 seasons. Where he was a 10 time rolling gold glove winner during those 11 years. 13 time All Star MVP in the American League back in 1997. Peeled foul, and it's one and two. Jim Tomey's hit 27 home runs at the Dome. Griffey right behind him. Of course, last year they were teammates. The end of the year with the White Sox. One and two. Blackburn, not a necessarily a strikeout pitcher, would love to get one here. And Griffey wastes a pitch near the outside corner. Well, that's what good hitters can do right there. Foul off nasty pitches. I was talking to him before the ball game about Lariano, and he said, "Yeah, he just kept pounding me in, pounding me in." He said, he "Even showed me the bat where all the marks were on this side, on the handle side." And he said, "Finally, he left one out over the plate, and I, I didn't miss it." One and two again to Griffey, and another foul. Blackburn has thrown 15 pitches already; does not have an out. Make that 16 pitches, 12 strikes. Hoping for some damage control. Nice dig by Morales, and it's two and two. Morales asked to catch at least tonight's game, perhaps tomorrow's game. The Twins figure they're going to need to make a decision with Mike Redmond sometime tomorrow. Either he is going to be available for the next couple of weeks, or he's not. With no off days, the Twins are in a position where they might have to make a move if Redmond doesn't respond well to his workout today. Now three and two to Griffey with Beltre on deck. So he's fouled off some tough pitches with two strikes, and now he's worked the count full. Well, the infield playing back, they will give up a run right here to get an out. Rick Anderson, the pitching coach, watching. Three and two to Blackburn. Or to Griffey from Blackburn. Popped up right side, pulled the string on him on three and two. And Casilla with the grab for out number one. Very good pitch right there by Blackburn. When you are not a strikeout pitcher, you have to use different things to get the hitter out. So he goes to the changeup right here, and Griffey, a little out front, pops it straight up for the first out. Very good pitch. By Nick Blackburn. So along at bat, Blackburn wins the battle, and here's Beltre. Slider that clips the corner. Beltre with a leadoff double. Came around to score the first run of the game last night. That's to left field. Delman Young with a running catch. And scoring is Chavez. And it's a busted bat sacrifice fly for the first run of the ball game. Well, he got in on Beltre right there, and it just shows you the power that he can generate picking up the RBI, hitting it deep enough, and with Chavez's speed, 
he's going to score easily from third base. Delman Young catches it, gets behind the ball nicely, throws it back in, but the Mariners take an early 1 0 lead. And now Branion. And if Blackburn can get Branion here and get out of this inning with just one run allowed, that would be a, a job well done. Yeah, it's good damage control. Exactly what Felix Hernandez did last night in the fifth inning with bases loaded, nobody out, and the Twins were only able to score one. Well, now he's got to get Branion, and he hits, misses the inside corner, ball one. Branding hitless last night. Great power. Throws major league career contact challenged at times. And he bounces it to first. Warno bobbles it. Blackburn covers the bag, and that's a pretty good job of damage control right there. Dick Blackburn giving up a first inning run. Good job of damage control right there. Menard's batting order for the Twins has Denard Span on the leadoff spot. Alexi Casilla second. Michael Kadire, the designated hitter, hitting third. Then Justin Morneau, Joe Greedy. Delman Young getting his first start of the year. The very good spring training. Then Carlos Gomez, Jose Morales, and Nick Punto. On the pitcher for the Mariners, Eric Bedard making 15 starts last year. Six games, six game winners. Last start coming July 4th of last year. A couple stints on a disabled list. And looking for his first career win against the Twins, 0-5 in his career with it in seven career starts. Got a beach ball drop on the field, so we'll have a little bit of an extra delay before Bedard's first pitch. Bedard acquired by the Mariners and on a smaller scale, it reminded me at the time and uh, still does, I guess, to some degree of another trade that Andy McPhail pulled off. When Andy was then the general manager of the Twins, Span takes a strike. Andy got five pitchers from the Mets for Frank Viola. In this case, McPhail now running the show with the Orioles got five players for Bedard from the Mariners. Chopped high off the plate. Put it in your back pocket. And Span hits an infield hit. It traveled forward only about 70 feet from home plate and went at least that high in the air. Well, take a look where this ball hits right off of the top of home plate. And Span hustling down the line, and Beltre had no chance. Northland Ford defense for the Mariners, and if you were watching last night, you heard us talk about how they feel. They've greatly improved in this area, even with Ishiro not on the lineup. Valentin Gutierrez and Chavez. Can cover some ground out in the outfield. A gold glove winner at third in Beltre. And the rest of the defensive alignment for Seattle. Here's Casilla taking high ball one. Casilla with a first inning hit in last night's game. The Twins had a threat, but couldn't convert that threat into some runs. Trying to answer Seattle's run on the top of this inning. Steps up in the box and takes a strike one and one. Yeah, Bedard, a left hander that'll get that fastball in the low 90s. That last pitch, the curveball, and then a changeup. In his second season with Seattle with the Orioles for from 2003 to 2007 before that trade you talked about, Dick. Bounce to first. Branion goes to the bag and Span advances. Well, Brandon doesn't have a lot of time at first base. This is kind of an adventure for the Mariners over there. And maybe made a little mistake right there. Make sure you get the lead runner. Instead, he thought about going to first as he did, and then maybe getting Span at second, but Span too quick. And now Kadair, who drove in the lone twins run last night, has a chance to drive in another one here in the first inning tonight. Down and in ball one. The Dyer, the right fielder. In last night's game, the designated hitter today, Jason Kubel, not in the starting lineup, giving the Twins some left handed options late in the game as a pinch hitter. He and Brian Busher do that. A 
Up and in 2 and 0. Pre game show Ron Coomer was uh, talking about Kadir probably being a fixture in right field for the Twins or at least in the lineup. He might be the one outfielder less affected by this glut of outfielders that the Twins have. 2 and 0. Oh. And of course, Kadir was so beset by injuries last year, the key number for him might be 150 in terms of games played. He played in 150 games a few years ago and had a fantastic season. Foul back. Oh, players in the minor leagues look for opportunities, and it was Denard Spann who took the opportunity when Michael Kadir was on a disabled list. So Kadir has nobody. At other than to blame himself if he doesn't get playing time out in the outfield right. because of his injuries last year. That man right there, Ron Gardenhire, Delman Young, you know, he played in almost every game last year. Carlos Gomez and then Denard Stan took over for Kadire. When Kadire played in 150 games a few years ago, he scored 102 runs and drove in 109. And uh, you know, by all accounts, that's a, that's an awfully solid year. So the Twins know what Kadir can do if he's healthy enough to get consistent playing time. Morno on deck, two and two. Twins trying to tie it up here in the first. Foul tip. Georgema hangs on, and Kadir strikes out again. Two down. Morno coming to the plate, and Ron Coomer down by the Twins dugout. He's had a little mic problems. Okay. I had a chance there earlier today to talk to Justin Morneau about facing Bedard, and he's had a lot of success. He told me how difficult it is facing this guy because he cuts the ball and sinks it. He throws change up lefty to lefty. And the other thing is he crossfires you, so you have a hard time seeing the baseball. To me, this is where Justin Morneau is such a good player because mentally he can lock in against a pitcher who's tough to see the ball and has good stuff and still has great success against this guy Bedard. One and oh. Morneau takes an off speed pitch over for a strike. Well, Ron, is it maybe because of Justin Morneau has such great plate coverage? I mean, that breaking ball right there, he kind of let it go. But I know Justin last year, over the last couple of years, he, he hit so many balls the other way with power. You know, Bert, I think also, I agree with you. And the other thing, too, is when you're facing a guy, you don't see the ball real well. To you don't try to do field. too much. And Gutierrez glides over to make the catch. To end the inning. The Twins get a leadoff chopper for a single leaf span and scoring position. It's still one to nothing. Last night. And now we head to the second inning, and Nick Blackburn hopes for a quicker time of it in the second inning. He'll face Jose Lopez, Kenji Jojima, and Vladimir Ballantine. Talk so much about my birthday last night. I forgot to wish uh, Mary with her. 98 years old yesterday. I want to wish her happy birthday from Haynesville, Minnesota. I know she's watching. Mary, happy belated birthday. Only 364 more days until your 99th birthday. 1 and 0 to Lopez. And now up high 2 and 0. Blackburn had his workload retarded during spring training because his left knee uh, got a little uh, ouchy shortly after workout started in earnest they shut him down and then built him back up again it's part and parcel of having knee surgery it's going to come back and uh, throb from time to time yeah he had knee surgery over the winter to repair that and then he kind of had some swelling and uh, you know he had to take some time off but he was scheduled to be the fifth starter. That would have been that first game in Chicago. But with Scott Baker put on a disable list, it just moved Nick Blackburn up the rotation. Three and two now. Lopez, not one who takes a lot of walks. 644 at bats last year, only 27 walks. It was three and zero. Oh, now it's three and two. 
he drew a walk, a leadoff walk, and the leadoff man is on again for the Mariners here in the second inning. So Blackburn has struggled here at the outset, and he'll pitch to Jojima. Well, maybe just working on that double play. See if he can get a ground ball right here off of Jojima. Jojima hoping to bounce back after a terrible year last year for the Mariners. There's a ground ball. Creedy cuts it off. Out at second. Quick relay. There's your double play. A great job by Joe Creedy right there cutting across because if that ball had bounced one more time to Nick Bulto, they wouldn't have been able to turn a double play. Cuts across, quick flea feed over to Casilla, and then it's up to Casilla to make a good throw, and he does. Great range right there by Creedy, and a good double play turned behind Blackbird. So quickly, two out, and here's Valentin. At the knees, a strike. Valentine, just a youngster from Curacao. Up and down the last couple years, made the club out of spring training because Ishiro Suzuki on a disabled list. Suzuki recovering from a bleeding ulcer, which they say started to just prior to the WBC. Morales digs it out one and two. And a breaking ball tap foul. Talked a little bit about this last night with Ishiro and a lot of the other Mariners missing time from the uh, Peoria Arizona spring uh, Arizona spring training side. A lot of guys like Valentin got a chance to showcase their talents in front of what is essentially a, a whole new regime in Seattle. New general manager, new manager, new coaching staff. Well, we mentioned last night if you lose 101 ball games, things happen, and they happened in Seattle. A lot of new faces. Creedy gets another chance on target to Morno. Leadoff walk does no damage. Blackburn gets a couple of ground balls that turn into three outs. Golden Valley, just a few miles away from here. What's a sense of pride that takes place each and every day inside Target Field? Well, I think it's really great. I mean, you know, our company is based out of there, and just to see, you know, 700 people go to work on a daily basis with a sense of pride. And uh, accomplishment with safety, quality, and productivity, hitting our schedule, and it's a really, uh, you know, it's a really great thing to see that much pride that you don't see in a lot of other building projects. Now, Target Field is two thirds of the way complete, ready for start in April of 2010. The seats are going in pretty soon. When will we see grass in Target Field, Greg? Well, we're actually going to start uh, some of the site work here pretty quick, and the first uh, piece of sod should be by Labor Day of this year. And uh, no reason for any kind of delays. We'll be ready for first pitch 0 10, right? No, those guys are working really, really hard to make sure we see the first pitch. Great. Thanks for your time, and uh, thanks for all your efforts here on uh, the new home of the Twins in a year. Thank you. All right, Dick and Bert. Thank you, Robbie. The grass, by the way, is being grown right now out in Colorado. And it's going to uh, be uh, pulled up. The sod is, and they're going to bring it over here to Minnesota and plant it. Late summer, early fall. I can't wait to see all the Cambria product in this new stadium. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. Marty Davis with Cambria. Pretty swings and misses. Bedard strikes out the Twins' third baseman for the first out of the second inning. White Sox had their weather delayed season opener today at, at U.S. Cellular Field. Gil Mesh pitched an outstanding ball game, and then the Royals reworked their bullpen. Kyle Farnsworth making his first appearance for his new team. And Jim Tomey got him for a three run home run, and the White Sox beat the Royals four to two. One down, here's Delman Young. And a check swing dribbler, and Bedard catches, spins, and fires, and Young is quickly retired, two away. 
Well, Bedard already with a couple strikeouts over his career that started with the Baltimore Orioles back in 2002 when he first came up. He's averaged almost a strikeout per inning pitched in his career. 739 innings pitched coming into this ball game. His 127th major league start in the 739 innings pitched, 711 strikeouts. Two gone quickly here in the second, and here's Carlos Gomez. And a breaking ball snaps over, strike one. Gomez looking for his first hit of the season. Another breaking ball misses, one and one. Three in a row and another called strike. Very good delivery by Bedard. Has a very good, solid delivery where he really maintains a good balance point right there and then explodes, explodes toward home and picks up his third strikeout. Three breaking balls and then he singes the inside corner with a fastball. The Twins go down quickly in the second. Minnesota. You can visit exploreminnesota.com to plan your next Minnesota vacation today. Looking at scenes from the Duluth Harbor, the westernmost port of the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, adjacent to the harbor is Canal Park, the aerial lift bridge, which spans the short canal into Duluth Harbor. A lot of great hotels and restaurants in that area. Also, the finish line there for Grandma's Marathon. Now, I know you've never run a marathon, but have you been to Duluth? I have one time when uh, George Metterwald, former catcher for the uh, Minnesota Twins, was a manager in the independent league up there. Beautiful place to visit. How about yourself? Oh, I know man, you on the caravan better. regularly, and uh, my family and I have gone up on the North Shore many times, or a few times anyway. Gooseberry Falls. Here's a Unieski Betancourt. And Blackburn starts him with a strike. Betancourt, Chavez, and Gutierrez facing Blackburn in the third. Wrapped to Creedy, third straight ground ball, hit to the Twins' third baseman, one away. The first two outs recorded by Blackburn were hit in the air. Griffey's pop up to Casilla, and then Beltre's sacrifice fly to left. And every out since then has been hit on the ground. One down and Chavez will hit. I think we see that a lot Dick from a sinker baller especially early in the ball game. You know Blackburn again when he's relaxed. He'll get a lot of ground ball outs. And it's said of sinker ballers if they are given extra days between their starts that that is particularly a problem now Blackburn. Pitching with a couple of extra days. I mean, no one gets into a rhythm this time of the year, but it's been six days since he pitched last in a Grapefruit League game, so a little extra time between starts. Well, it's a little different during the season than your opening day assignment because you're pumped up. You know, I mean, there's no reason for Blackburn, even though he said that one nothing loss to Chicago, you know, he can't get any more nervous than that. You're nervous for opening day and you want things to go your way and then you have the little pest hitters like Chavez there to help ruin it. Chavez getting his second single of the ball game. Because uh, Morno had to play in close of his, because of his speed the chopper bounced over his head special experiences are available for large groups like leading the seventh inning stretch. Pre-game opportunities are available for choirs, bands, and dance teams. Call 833 Twins or log on to twinsbaseball.com slash groups to get all the information. So Chavez aboard, a couple of times he took off towards second base. Gutierrez eventually cracked a double into the right field corner. Now Chavez goes on the first pitch. And he steals second easily. Jose Morales is not known as a great defensive catcher or a great thrower and the Mariners wasted a little time in running on him here in the third inning. Well, you can look at the catcher but you know what a look at the jump he had off of Blackburn right there. Chavez last year with the Mets stole only six bases in 133 ball games. Now prior to that with Montreal that's when he ran more so Seattle would like to get some more speed out of Chavez back in 2004 he stole 32 bases. 
one and zero, oh, and Gutierrez takes low two and zero. Oh. Gutierrez getting a chance. He felt he never got with the Cleveland Indians, where he was asked to play right field. And the Mariners have all but told him, "Look, you're our center fielder, and we're going to hit you toward the top of the lineup." There's a call strike two and one. Ah, some more birthday cake delivered up here. I think the cake we didn't eat yesterday is back here. Very nice. And uh, and a nice little card right here. I'll let to eat the card. Three and one with Ken Griffey Jr. on deck. Blackburn worked around a leadoff walk in the second. And that was hit off of Gutierrez's foot. He never left home plate. And it's three and two. Chuck Merriweather, the home plate umpire, never really made a call, and that's what he's talking to Gutierrez about right there. Let's see if this hit his front foot. You see, where's that pad? Sure looked like it got a part of the shoe right there. There's Don Wakamatsu. He's a coach with the Buck Showalter's uh, Texas Ranger Club for a number of years. Not his first time inside the Metrodome here, but his first time as a major league manager, obviously. Three and two to Franklin Gutierrez. And another bounder foul. Blackburn hoping. To get Gutierrez here for the inning second out. The ground ball, Punto bobbles it, picks it up, and does a nice job with that strong throw across the diamond to get Gutierrez for out number two. Well, this is persistence right here by Nick Punto. Even though the ball bounced out of his glove, he didn't stop trying to make the play. Right there, ball bounces out, he sees it, gets it back in the glove, and then showing off that strong arm just to get Gutierrez at first base. Nice play by Nick Punto, even though that that's a ball normally he catches and makes it look easier than that. Here's Griffey had a long battle with Blackburn, and Blackburn got him to pop up on a changeup for a key out in the first inning. Now a fastball that misses the inside corner. One and zero. Oh. Nice block by Morales, 2 0. Oh. First base is open, but pretty potent hitter in Beltre is on deck. I want to be very careful here with first base open, like you mentioned, Dick. Three and zero. Fourth three ball count for Blackburn. And Beltre on deck. See, this is where a lot of times as a pitcher you just throw it hard in. If you walk him, you walk him. And instead, he threw that football up and away in a second walk. So now first and second and Beltre will come to the plate with two men aboard. Well, let's take a look at this. The first pitch pretty good pitch right here. It looked like a ball that could have been called a fastball middle end that he did not call it and Blackburn went with a breaking ball. Then they stayed away. Good movement on those pitches. But see a lot of times when I had first base open like that, 
I would go hard in on that hitter. I didn't care if I walked him. If I hit him, that's fine. But it sends a message next time he's up. Beltre jumps on the first pitch. He'll drive in a run. And the Mariners make it a 2 0 ball game. Chavez scores, and Beltre comes up with another big hit against the Twins. Well, second RBI of the ball game for Beltre. Hit the sacrifice RBI in the first inning. And right there, even though he got jammed, the ball was up in the zone, and he's strong enough to fight it off. How quick he is, able to get the barrel of the bat out quickly, hitting it into a left center field. And Chavez scores for the second time in the ball game. And here's Brannion, first and second, two away. Popped up, a foul ball, and back into the seats. Ron Comer, Adrian Beltre has been a real pest to the Twins over the last couple of years. Well, Dick, he has, and I've watched him play for a long time, and he gets big hits and drives in big runs. To me, you know, we got a young pitcher on the mound. Sometimes you wonder, knowing the age of Ken Griffey Jr., his reputation is from years past, not current, even though he hit the home run. I really would have liked to have seen Blackie go right after Jr., like, like Burt was saying, and pound him in and try to strike him out or get him out, as opposed to walking him kind of unintentionally, intentionally, and leaving Beltre to get a, get a, a free shot at knocking in a run. That's a tough situation to be in for uh, Blackie. To face uh, Beltre. Two well, strikes to Brannion and a swinging strike three to end the inning. A couple of Mariner hits and another Seattle run. It's two to nothing. Guys, with the Seattle Mariners, you talked about protecting Ken Griffey Senior or Junior with Beltre. Well, Russell Brannion, he's got a you know hit better or clubs are going to start pitching around Beltre. So that's how clubs can protect each other's hitters in that lineup. Another run for Bedard. Now a 2 nothing Seattle lead. Jose Morales takes strike one leading off the Twins third inning. Big swing and a miss two strikes. You know in last night's ball game, Felix Hernandez faced 31 batters. He's able to get strike one on 25 of the 31. And Bedard doing the same thing. He's faced eight batters, been able to get strike one on six of the eight. Another key to pitching consistently. And Morales swings over a breaking ball and already four strikeouts from the first eight hitters against Eric Bedard. Well, we talked about Bedard as far as his delivery and how he keeps that right shoulder in. Does a great job of hiding that ball as long as possible. And as you look at his delivery, you can almost see Bedard. The hitter at home plate can see Bedard, where a lot of pitchers you don't you can't read their names. All off Louis Tion almost. Here's Punto. And he takes a fastball on the outside corner of strike. Again on the outside corner. Oh, you see the good curveball right there. Good tight rotation. Check your swing. One and two. Twins haven't done much scoring so far. Just one run in an eleven and a third innings. Punto lifts it foul over the Seattle dugout. Well, Nick Punto, one of the players, has had some success against Bedard. Five hits in 12 at bats, a couple doubles. And another check swing, two and two. That's a good take right there by Punto because that's his strikeout pitch, that curveball down just on the other side of home plate. Just had Morales swing through it for his fourth strikeout. Two and two to the twin shortstop. Laced 
foul. You look at the Seattle team and they clearly underachieved, but in a way that's a somewhat of a compliment in that individually these players are capable of so much more than what they did last year. They've got an ace, a number one guy in Felix Hernandez. Bedard went healthy. Awfully good pitcher. Here's a chopper to short. Betancourt guns it across two down. Well, then you have Carlos Silva. You hopefully the Mariners are not going to get the same year they had out of them last year. Back to back historical seasons are yours for the viewing if you join the twin season ticket family. Lower level 20 game plans start at $380 for the final season in the dome, and that gets you a spot in line for the seat selection process at Target Field. Call 833 Twins right now and get more details. Two down, here's Denard Span. He chopped one about 100 feet in the air and beat out an infield hit. Outside, ball one. Span drew a couple of walks last night, dropped a sacrifice down. Lifted to left field, and Andy Chavez is there. And Bedard has retired nine in a row and has a two nothing lead. Circle from Wilmer. And Joan Kuiper from Crystal, Minnesota. Happy, happy 89th birthday. Jose Lopez will lead things off in the fourth against Nick Blackburn. And the first pitch up and in. Got too many pitches so far for Blackburn. 57 right now, starting his fourth inning of work as he falls behind on Lopez. Pitch inside, and Lopez hooks it foul. One and one. He doesn't walk very often, but he drew a leadoff walk. And then on the next pitch, Georgia Ma wrapped into a double play. Pop up short left field. Delman Young puts it away. One down. A lot of these starting pitchers for the Twins are all very good. They're very young, and a lot of them came up through the minor league system together and have bonded. We all help each other. We're pulling for each other, and we want each other to win. Obviously, that's going to help the team out. So um, it's great. It's a lot of fun. You go home in the off season, and you start to miss that a little bit. So. It's good to get back around here and see the guys, and it, it makes it exciting having such a close knit group. Josema takes a strike. That's a good point right there because you know these guys are expected, so much expected out of this young starting staff, but it's the camaraderie that they have had over the last couple of years to get to know each other in the minor leagues and then experiences at the major league level. All led by that man right there, Rick Anderson, does a great job of handling the pitching staff, the starters, and the relievers. Little fly ball left center field, Young, Gomez. And Gomez calls off Young two away. So now Blackburn getting some fly ball outs here with two of them uh, here in the fourth inning, and that'll bring up Valentin. Hey, threw a great breaking ball to Lopez out of Lopez's way out front that hit that fly ball to Young, and right there, Jojima on a pitch up just got underneath it. Threw the fly ball to Gomez. Valentin hit a two hopper right to Joe Creedy to wrap up the second inning. Slider clips the corner. Blackburn and it'll roll into center field. Almost a check swing base hit for Ballantin. Well, that first pitch, the curveball, that had good downward motion. That slider right there kind of hung a little bit. And Blackburn, whose delivery falls a little bit toward first base, just got out of the way of that line drive. Fifth hit for the Mariners. So Ballantin at first with two away, and here's Unieski Betancourt. Who saw Chavez take off on the first pitch after reaching in the third, paying uh, some attention at least to Ballantine at first. Black 
Blackburn shaves that outside corner. Strike one. Jammed him in a little looper to center. Left center. Young's throw coming to third, and now Creedy fires to second. Safe at second. So Young went for the lead runner at third, and that opened up second base for Bentoncourt. And the Mariners are putting together a two out threat. It's not a bad play right there by Young because of the aggressive running by Valentin. He took the chance right here. Valentin running on a soft line drive to left field. Young got behind it. Aggressive throw. But good piece of base running by Bettencourt. Getting going from first to second. To see a sweet tag nearly nailed Bettencourt at second base. So now two in scoring position, two out. And Chavez, who's already got a pair of hits, takes strike one. Chavez lined a single to right, and then he chopped one over the head of Morno. He scored both runs in the game so far. He saw the defense of the Twins not playing very deeply. And he went back inside again. It looked like that had plenty of the plate. One and one. Breaking ball wrapped through the hole to right. Valentin scores. Bettencourt coming around. Span bobbles it, and it's 4 0 Seattle. Three straight two out hits for the Mariners. And a 4 0 lead. Well, that was almost like that two run single that Lopez had in the ninth inning last night. Just sometimes they hit the ball on the ground, and it has eyes in the right field. Span bobbles it right there, but with two outs, Bettencourt was going to score anyway. Seven hits for the Mariners, three straight hits. And here's Gutierrez, who has the only extra base hit. And Chavez stole second in the third inning and eventually scored on Beltre's RBI single. Will be the 70th pitch of the night for Blackburn whenever he delivers it to home plate. And the first pitch strike. Only once has. Blackburn faced fewer than five hitters in an inning, and that was the second inning. And in that inning, he issued a leadoff walk. So it has not been a smooth ride for the Twins right hander so far. Off the knuckles and a little jam shot, Punto to the bag to end the inning. Three straight hits and two more Seattle runs. It's 4 0. Sports North is brought to you by Quest. Get in the loop and join the community that's changing the way people connect. By Grand Casino Malax and Grand Casino Hinkley. Expect Grand. And by Chrysler. From power and efficiency to innovation and style, it's the way our vehicles come together that sets us apart. Chrysler. Alexi Casilla leading off the Twins fourth with Eric Bedard. Stick to an early 4 0 lead, and Casilla takes up high. Oh, and a pitcher like Bedard, that's what he likes, too. Some early run support. He'll continue to attack the strike zone. Chopper over Beltre's head. Bettencard with a strong throw, and a nice job by Brannion keeping a foot on the bag. One down. 
Well, this high chopper just over the reach of Beltre and Betancourt right there showing off his arm as Nick Punto did earlier in the ball game. Talking about maybe defensive alignment. You see Beltre having to play in because of the possible butt. And Matt Brannion have, having to go on the infield side to make that catch. One quick out. Ten in a row sent down by Bedard. The only runner the Twins have had. Came when Bernard Span chopped one off the plate for an infield hit leading off the ball game. Ron Coomer, you got to like the way that Bedard's going at the Twins right now. Well, you called it early in the game where he's throwing strike one just about every hitter. The other thing that I'm looking at in the pregame show, we showed him getting hit quite a bit by Twins hitters, and he threw a lot of pitches in the middle of the plate tonight. Not not even close that backdoor breaking ball right there to the righties that he just threw he threw in a punto through some to Gomez has been very good the slider down and in and then he's been able to pitch effectively inside when he has to great job so far by Bedard. Kadir drives it deep down the right field line it's a foul ball. Well, he tried to go in right there in Kadir but let's look at Eric Bedard here tonight with four strikeouts in the ball game. The only hit was a high chopper off of home plate. Good curveball right there. Good tight rotation. That's the fastball Ron Krueger was talking about. Start looking for the breaking ball. Sneak that fastball in. Kadir gets his second hit. Waited for that breaking ball. It was left up a little bit. And he drilled it to left. A one-out single. That's what the Twins needed right there. Bedard had retired 10 straight. He needs somebody to stop that little streak. And Kadir did it right there with a one-out base hit. Second hit for the Twins. Yeah, breaking ball just kind of left up a little bit, and Michael didn't miss it, took advantage of it. So now, pitching from the stretch for the first time in a long time, Tamorno is fellow Canadian, ball one. Guys, this is going to be an at bat for Justin in talking to him early. I wouldn't be surprised at all, but Arch stays away from him most of the at bat and makes Justin beat him to left field. That's been the, the way he's been doing it so far, and it wouldn't surprise me at all. Well, that's what he did his first at bat, and he hit that fly ball to left center field. And if you go in, go hard in, miss off the plate, so he doesn't just look away. That's a good pitch right there, moving Justin off the plate. He's been textbook so far tonight, Bert. Everything you've talked about, and as a hitter, that you know what a guy really wants to do, Bedard's been able to do tonight. Two and out, Amorno. Three and out. Sure, where that ball missed. Looks like it cut the plate in half. Fastball. Three and one. Well, a good fastball, good location. Now it's three and one. Does Justin look another fastball right here? Outer half of the plate. He doesn't want to make, make a mistake like Ron Coomer said. Jojima sitting outside again. And now three and two. And a little extra giddy up on that pitch right there. Justin trying to pull that ball. If you look, mm -hmm. he came off it just a little trying to hook it. And when Bedard hits his spot away, away on home plate, it makes it really tough for Justin to get to that fastball. Let's see if he has a lot of confidence in that breaking ball right here. Tattooed to center. Gutierrez is back, makes the catch. Morno stung it, but in the ballpark, and a well hit out number two. Yeah, he has confidence in that breaking ball. He just left it up, and Justin hit it hard, but right at Gutierrez. And Aflac Duck is back this year. Aflac, where have you been? One of the five left handed pitchers to have double digit strikeout games ten times since 2006. Johan Santana. <laughs> I think we nailed Probably, it. Probably uh, Randy Johnson. That is a fair ball down the line. Kadir around second. Chavez with great speed fields it in the corner. And Kadir will be held at third. Creedy has his first extra base hit. And the Twins try to put together a rally with two out. Well, Joe Creedy jumping on the first pitch. Looked like a breaking ball. He got the barrel of the bat out. And Beltre playing a little bit off that third baseline. There's some room. 
between Beltre and that third base bag. Yeah, the breaking ball staying up. And you can see Beltre had no chance as that ball worked its way down toward the Twins' bullpen. And a good job by Chavez getting over there quickly to keep Kadir at third. Mariner's got a big a two out, two run single in the top of this inning. And now Young will try to drive in a pair with a hit. With Creedy at second and Kadir at third. Breaking ball, strike one. Young in the first pitch. Back in the second inning and a check swing just hit a chopper back to Bedard. And Jojima will go to the mound. Bernard, Seattle's opening day starter last year. The shoulder surgery that ended his first season with the Mariners. Yeah, he was on a disabled list a couple times, had some hip problems in April. They put him on a 15 day disabled list. And then he had the bad shoulder, his last start again, July 4th of last year. Had it operated on, had a cyst that was also removed. One strike to Delman Young. Fastball inside. Well, whatever Jojima and Bedard talked about right there, maybe Jojima wanted to come back with another breaking ball. Bedard, pitcher has that final say. What do I want to do? And he went with a fastball inside. Breaking ball and Young waves at it. One and two. You can tell by the swings of a lot of the Twins hitters that that breaking ball has very tight rotation. It looks like a fastball and then the bottom just drops out of it. One and two to Delman Young. Chopper fielded in foul territory by Beltre. Talking with former Twins great Tony Oliva before the game today and he complimented Beltre for a key play in the game last night. The Twins were trying to put together a rally and Alexi Casilla hit that little squibber. Went down the line and Beltre backhanded and threw out the speedy Casilla from foul territory. You know, and Tony said, you know, if that ball gets by Beltre, that's a triple for Casilla, and who knows where the inning or the game ends up. Even so. though Beltre, we've talked about maybe sometimes his lack of uh, offense that the, that the club would like to have. Two time Rolling Gold Glove winner the last couple of years. Good defensive third baseman. Twins come up a hit short in their fourth inning rally. Lead Nick Blackburn and the Twins for zip. Thursday's game not on television, and when the game isn't on, you can still see all the plays and at bats that matter most during Twins squeeze play. A 30 minute condensed version of select non televised Twins games. Catch the action from the Twins and the Mariners Thursday afternoon at 7 o'clock Thursday night on Twins squeeze play only on Fox Sports North. Fastball just off the plate to Ken Griffey Jr. It was 20 years ago that Ken Griffey Jr. was a rookie. So was Omar Vizquel. And so was Randy Johnson. And all three of them are still playing. Vizquel is a utility infielder, a backup for the Texas Rangers. Randy Johnson pursuing his 300th win for the San Francisco Giants this year. That's the first time in baseball history that's ever happened where three players came in as rookies together and 20 years later we're still playing Major League Baseball. And Griffey draws his second walk and it uncharacteristically is the third walk issued by Nick Blackburn. And all three the case can be made will be in the Hall of Fame. Randy Johnson certainly will get in Griffey will certainly get in a call made to the Twins bullpen. And if uh, defensive excellence and separation from the rest of the uh, fielding class at shortstop is to ever be rewarded, Omar Vizquel deserves uh, consideration for Cooperstown nice. as well. Like Ozzie Smith. Yep. One strike to Beltre. He's driven in two runs, one, uh, one with a fly ball in the first, and then a two out single that scored Chavez in the third.
popped up. Punto calling for it. One away. Twins fans, you can get into the game on FSN and talk baseball. You can submit uh, submit your question online at carsoup.com slash baseball. Hunter McGowan from Shoreview. Wondering whether the Twins have identified a setup man yet. Philip Umber warming up in the Twins pen. Well, Rich Dalmasic not able to uh, to be out in that bullpen due to health reasons. It's uh, Glenn Perkins, I can think think that has taken all over out there. He's answering the phone, watching uh, Philip Umber. Stelly's back home, by the way. We're happy to say, uh, taken the, from the hospital today. He's feeling and doing much better, and the hope is that he'll be here on the Thursday for the final game of this series and on the plane ride to Chicago. Yes, Stelly, get back quick. So, have they established? A setup reliever yet for the to set up things up for Joe Nathan. Have they? I don't know. That was the carsoup.com. I, I I think that's still in the making. I think you're looking at those two guys right there, Matt Guerrero and uh, Jesse Crane, along with Greg Breslow. I think all three of those guys are going to be the, the person that uh, or persons that Ron Gardenhire, Rick Anderson, will probably look for as a setup man. One and two to Branyan. Blocked by Morales. And Griffey stays put. Any manager would like to have that formula where a starter would go six or seven and then what? Atherton. Berenguer Reardon in 87 was uh, often the formula used. And I don't know. That that is established yet I think that's something that will evolve over the over the course of time uh, here in the first couple right, months. Right. I mean I think the last couple of years you look at the New York Mets you know they did not have that set up guy to a closer and then in last night's victory. They had, uh, you know, JJ puts pitch the eighth and Rodriguez pitch the ninth for the save. That's hooked into the right field corner. Griffey round second on his way to third. Branding will slam on the brakes with Span getting to the ball quickly. And the Mariners have another threat going here in the fifth. I remember Russell, Russell Branding a couple years ago wanted to retire from baseball after a season with the Cardinals that he did not do very well. Well, he came up with the Brewers last year after pitch playing in Triple A. Ended up hitting 20 home runs. Excuse me, 12 home runs for the uh, Brewers, and now wants to continue to play. So he could be a big part in Seattle's uh, rebirth, more or less, in that Western Division if he stays hot. Here's Lopez, and now Blackburn really would love to get a ground ball hit at somebody and get out of this fifth inning mess. There's a ground ball backhanded by Punto. Out at second, relay to first. Got him! What a double play! Punto Casino Morno! Wow. And the Mariners come up empty in the fifth. Blackburn talking it over at the end of the dugout. Yeah, too many pitches right there. Blackburn with three walks. I think he only had a couple games last year where he walked three batters in a ball game. So unusual start for Blackburn. At 85 pitches, his night might be done. We're on the other side. 54 pitches right now for Eric Bedard starting his fifth inning of work. Gomez takes ball one, bottom third of the Twins lineup, trying to get something going here in the fifth against Bedard. Big swing and a miss, one and one. Gomez looking for that first hit. 0 for 5 with a couple of strikeouts. Then Jose Morales and Nick Punto. Driven deep to right center field. Ballantine won't catch it. It one hops the wall. Gomez has an extra base hit. He is not going to be denied third base. Well, one of the prettiest things in baseball, a triple. Gomez had seven of them last year, and his first hit this year 
takes that fastball the other way. Valentin cannot get to it. And then runners like Gomez, they have that extra gear. And you're going to see it right here as he rounds second. Right about there. That's where he kicks it in. And it's fun to watch. And now Morales, middle infield, back corner infielders, even with their bases. Breaking ball over for a strike. Morales went down swinging. Leading off the third inning. Made a pinch hitting appearance last night for Mike Redman and grounded out. 0 for 2 in the young season. Up high with a fastball. Ron Kermer, you got to like what Gogo -Go -Go did right there. Yeah, I think that's a big at bat because, you know, in facing left handers coming up, if he does give Denard Span a day off, Gomez is going to have to be the leadoff hitter like he is this inning. And to me, the swing and miss and the ball in the dirt to big wild swing, bad. But then what does he do? He comes right back and shoots the ball the other way and shows a little discipline at the plate and a little more patience. To me, that's a little bit of maturity that you're seeing from Carlos Gomez. Well, Coombe, he also took advantage of a Bedard fastball where Bedard struck him out the first time up on all breaking balls. He and Gomez in that at bat swung at a pitch down and Bedard left the fastball up and Gomez didn't miss it. He didn't and, and to me it just looks like I watched him have a lot more patience at home plate in spring training and now here it's looking like his plan that him and Joe Vavra have come up with of him trying to drive the ball to right center field. You know that's a great sign right there that you're seeing. And what does Bedard do against Morales comes right back with that strikeout curveball and picks up strikeout number six. And now Punto. Punto the grounder to short his first time up. Twins haven't obviously been able to mount anything offensively last night against Hernandez and tonight against Bedard. They've got the leadoff triple here. They've not been able to bunch things together. This figures to be a team that's going to hit more home runs than last year, but still not an abundance of home runs. And they need to build innings. And they've not been able to do that so far. Oh, you need a big hit. Maybe a Nick Punto base hit right here will get open up everything for everybody else. And that's sometimes that's what it takes. I think at the beginning of the year, everybody presses a little bit. You know, they're 0 for 4, 0 for 5. You don't want it to get 0 for 12, especially the outfielders, because of the rotation that uh, they may find themselves in. Nick one. Punto knows he's going to get his at bats. He's the everyday shortstop. One and one to Punto. I I got a piece of it. Yep. By whatever means necessary, Punto got clipped on the uh, left elbow, it looked like. So now first and third, one away, and the lineup rolls over with Span coming up. Well, well, Bedard, a lot like Glenn Perkins, are not afraid to pitch inside, and it just got a piece of Punto right there. Runners at the corners, one out. Punto got hit in that area. I guess it was on the other arm, though. He was a, a left handed batter late in the. Uh, um, WBC it was his throwing arm. Here's Span, a chopper for a base hit in the first and a fly ball to left in the third. Punto playing for the Italian team. As Ron Gardenhire said, he uh, played for Italy because he once had gone to Little Italy and visited. <laughs> Why Ron Gardenhire thought he'd be the manager for the Canadian team because he lives in a little Canada. Yeah. Field span delivers. Gomez scores. Punto to third, and the Twins get their first run of the night against Bedard. Well, Denard Span just reaches out, hits it past Russell Brannion at first base into right field. Brannion diving for the ball. The ball gets by him. Valentin gets it back in. But Bernard Spann picking up his first RBI of the year on his second hit of the ball game. Gomez after the leadoff triple comes in. It's four to one. Tying run at the plate and Alexi Casilla. Threatening to bunt. He takes ball one.
Garcia with a couple of ground balls so far. Once to first, once to short. Good take, two and zero. Oh. Robbie Insmikowski was down on the field when Denard Span and Ken Griffey Jr. had a little bit of a chat. Yeah, I don't know how many of you guys know Denard Span grew up in Tampa, Florida, but his favorite player growing up and to this day is Ken Griffey Jr. I asked him during BP today if he's ever met Ken Griffey Jr. He said he met him briefly last year when Griffey was with the White Sox, and I said, how about yesterday? He goes, talk to him briefly. He told me yesterday he wanted to talk to me, and I said, uh, any idea what he's going to say? He said, uh, I'm not sure, but I hope I didn't do anything bad, but uh, I think that talk uh, did him a little bit of good today guys two and one to Casilla breaking ball left up just a little bit and it's three and one with Kadir on deck I think the last couple of innings I've seen Badar throw some very good curveballs but then he's left a couple up he left one up to Kadir in his last at bat Span goes. It's a swing and a miss, and the throw to second not in time. So Casilla swung through strike two. Jojima's throw not quite in time, and the Twins get a speedy runner at second base in Denard Span. Yeah, Span getting a very good jump right here. Bedard with that high leg kick, good throw by Jojima, but Span just beat the throw. So now a full count to Casilla, and a hit to the outfield could score two more. Instead, a fastball and Casilla swings over the top two away. And strikeout number seven for Bedard. He's mixed it up. He's yeah. gotten strikeouts with both the fastball and the off speed stuff. Oh, he threw Justin Morneau that breaking ball on 3 2 that Justin lined into center field for an out. But right there, you throw so many curveballs and you can show the opponent that you can get it over at any time. Makes that fastball a little bit quicker. And that's how he struck out Casilla right there. Twins need a big two out hit from Michael Kadire. He snaps a breaking ball over. It's been all or nothing for Kadir so far this year. Two for six, two singles, and four strikeouts. So just make contact. Put it in play. Or knock it out of play. High fastball, 0 and 2. Had a chance with Delman Young at the plate, two men in scoring position in the fourth, and Bedard struck him out. Same spot here, a strikeout of Casilla, and now Bedard quickly ahead of Kadir. And he almost pulled the trigger on another pitch up and away. Throughout the season last year, the Twins were far and away the best team with men in scoring position. So far in a game and a half, they've not had that big clutch hit yet. Moves them off the plate, two and two. You saw Corcoran warming up in the Seattle bullpen. Well, started Kadire off with a breaking ball, then fastball that they threw by him, and then a couple fastballs, one up, and then that last fastball up and in. See if they go back inside or if he goes to that curveball. Fouled off his front leg. They went with a curveball. And I are fouling it off. So Jojima to the mound. Could I are getting some time here to try to walk it off. Could I are wearing that pad. Philip Umber warming up. And given the shot we showed you coming out of break a little while ago, it would appear that Umber will pitch the sixth inning for the Twins. The Blackburn's night is done. Two and two to Michael Kadire. Just a little bit high. Ooh. Boy, not missing by much. He went to a fastball mm. inside, and Chuck Merriweather, <laughs> I think he's missed some calls back there on both sides. Full count to Kadire with Morno on deck.
Foul back. Now the Twins had a tough time at one point. Bedard had retired 10 men in a row. But now five of the last eight batters, five of the last nine batters have reached. And they need one more to deliver here to draw this game a lot closer. Let's see if he goes to that curveball right here. Goes back to the fastball. Kadire calling time. You have first base open, but you have Justin Morneau on deck. Three and two to Michael Kadire. Driven to center field. Two runs are going to score. Kadire gets that big two out hit to drive in two more. Bedard for some reason on that pitch looked like he lowered his arm angle which straightens out that fastball and Kadire good level swing reaches out and hits it sharply in the center field with two outs Punto scores followed by Denard Spann to make it a four to three ball game so good two out hitting right there by Michael Kadire Rick Adair coming to the mound this has been far and away Bedard's Toughest inning. It started with Gomez's triple. He hit a batter. A couple of well hit base hits, a span and Kadire, and a quick trip to the mound from the new Seattle pitching coach. And that was a quick trip. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rick Adar. See you later. Yeah. Morno is 0 for 2. He had a fly ball to center and then he hit a line drive to center that drove Gutierrez back near the warning track. Well, Bedard's thrown a lot of pitches this inning, 26 pitches already. Strike one to Morno. My goodness. That <laughs> Chuck Merriweather's had a tough night behind the plate. One and one. Well, at least he didn't call that a strike. Nothing wrong with an umpire having a big strike zone. <laughs> That's the one down the middle that he's missed. <laughs> Foul, and it's one and two. And those are little things in the game Dix can sometimes frustrate a pitcher early. I think we saw from Blackburn and we've seen some pitches already this inning for Bedard that you make good quality pitches and they're called balls. Sometimes it, it does play a mind game out there with you as your pitcher. One and two to Morno. And if I would think that the most frustrating thing would be the inconsistency where it's called a strike once and you go back out in a situation where you really need a strike and then it's not there. Well, you know what? He's going to throw maybe 35 pitches this inning, Bedard. He's going to go back to the dugout and ask Jojima, where was that 2 2 pitch to Michael Kadire? Even though he's through 35 and forget about the other 34, where was that 2 2 pitch? Right. That's the one that Bedard's going to ask. And he has a right to ask. Two and two to Morno. Got him with a breaking ball. Jojima ends the inning. But the Twins put together three hits. A hit batter to score three runs, and it's a one run ball game. North, the Twins scored three in that last half inning, pulled it within a run at four to three. I am now in the Minnesota Lottery winner circle, and I am joined by Kaylee, who has made the trip from where? East Grand Forks, Minnesota. East Grand Forks, Minnesota comes all the way here to watch the Twins play baseball, and look at her sign right here. Circle me, Bert. My birthday is April 6th, too. Now, uh, how old are you, Kaylee? 20 now. You just turned 20. Yep. Bert, uh, Bert obviously celebrated his birthday yesterday. Do you know how old Bert turned yesterday? You want to venture a guess? 58? Whoa, 58. very good. He's right very on the good. Money. How do you know? Ding, 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 ding. Because now, he's old. Almost three times your age. You realize that? <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. So did we get circled already? Yes, you did. Yes, we got circled. You and I, first time being circled together. 
feel good about that? I do. All right, say, Bert, happy birthday to us. Back to you. Happy birthday to, birthday, oh, happy birthday to us, Bert. <laughs> yes, happy birthday to us. Philip Umber, the new Twins pitcher, facing Kenji Jojima, leading off the sixth in what is now a one run game. Well, Umber's job right here come in and throw strikes. Last year came up with the Twins in September, appeared in five ball games, 4.63 ERA. Of course, coming over from the Mets in the Johan Santana trade. And strike two to Jojima. It'll be Jojima, Ballantine, and Bettencourt. When uh, the decision was made that Umber was going to pitch the sixth inning, it was then a 4 0 Seattle lead, now a 4 3 game. Bouncer to short. Punto is a chest high second hop. One away. And outings like this are going to be critical for Umber. With Scott Baker eventually being activated, the Twins will need to make a pitching move. Umber is out of options. And so he really wants to make a good impression here, doesn't he, Ron Coomer? You know, guys, like we did last year, we're going to continue the instruction. I know your favorite part of the postgame show, Bert. And today, what we're going to we're going to show is the pivot today at second base that we saw from Alexi Casilla, the double play that got Blackie out of the inning. Unbelievable double play, Punto to Casilla. So today, that's going to be our instructional in the postgame show: is the double play pivot at second base. Ah, uh, no better two guys to do it than than me and you too, Coom. <laughs> we will slide, okay? We can butcher that up with the best of them, but at least we'll be able to teach some of the kids something, Bert. Well, you know what? We might look back at that this ball game and say, you know what? That might have been the turning point right there because that was a great double play. Yeah, without question, that was. That's one of those things that on this turf also it makes it a play that with two really quick infielders you can make that play. Punto's unbelievable with his range and Lexi he's got great hands at second base. Half swing. Nope. Says Eric Cooper. I look forward to those instructionals. They were a big success last year. What I like about them Dick and Ron is just the teaching aspect of the game. Just picking little things like turning to double play the proper way to do it and how not to do it. Lifted foul down the line two and two. We're getting back to Umber. This is such a critical outing for him because he knows the number game that he is involved in. Twins carrying 12 pitchers that won't change for a while. But who the 12 are is going to change. Hook inside and it's three and two with Scott Baker the opening night scheduled opening night starter due to come back within a week or so. Something has to give and for Philip Umber he's out of options. If the twins want to send him down they risk losing him to another team through waivers. Popped up and straight up. Creedy comes in. And oh. makes a tumbling catch. Morales I don't think ever saw the ball and it almost landed on top of his head. Well again Joe Creedy has played here before he knows on these type of pop ups you cannot take your eye off the ball. Morales says please you take it because I don't see it. Maybe he did at the last second. Creedy called him off. And good concentration there by Joe Creedy making a very nice catch. Two down and now Bettencourt. And Umber delivers strike one. And that's so important. You know what? Umber getting strike one. But Dard in the fourth and fifth inning, he was only able to get strike one on 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 two of the ten batters he faced. That's a key. Breaking ball and Bettencourt laces it into center field. Our Aflac trivia question involved left-handed pitchers who struck out ten or more in a game a lot. You gotta think CC Sabathia, probably Cole Hamels. Affleck. Santana, Johan Santana, Scott Cashmere. Santana's on the list, so we got the answer, Greg. Sabathia, Cashmere, we we got we nailed it. Yes, we did. all the way through. Here's Andy Chavez, and Twins are going to try to figure out a way here to keep him off the bases and retire him. Yeah, bring back Ishiro. Three for three, and all three hits have led to run scoring for Seattle. Lead off single in the first, and he scored on a sacrifice fly. 
A one out single in the third, a stolen base later saw him come in on Beltre's single, and then a big two run, two out single in the fourth that scored Ballantine and Betancourt. Foul over the Twins bullpen. Two strikes. Phillip under 26 years old at six foot four. Kind of has that high leg kick toward home plate in that stretch position. For the most part, he had a good spring training. His last outing wasn't very good, nor was his very first one of the Grapefruit League action. Guerrero and Breslow warming up. Bettencourt, not much of a base stealer. Well, I'm sure the Mariners have a scouting report on Jose Morales and know that it's not Joe Maurer behind the plate for the Twins. Big lead by Bettencourt. And there he goes. Morales' throw in time. Well, again, you know, Morales, that wasn't a bad throw. That was, again, stolen off of the pitcher. Chavez stole a base in the third inning off of Blackburn and right here with that high leg kick that two three steps and that's the difference between a good throw and right there Umber with that high leg kick Betancourt able to steal his first base of the year one and two to Chavez breaking ball where was it. I don't know where that pitch missed. Well, we take a look at it here. It's the curveball. And I guess I told you that's the one right down the middle of the plate he's had a tough time with. Two and two. And now a half swing and that's strike three. So Umber pitches a score of six. Still a one run game. This guy does not need a course light after the game. Nobody does. He almost got hit by that ball, and whew, I can't wait for that course light. The Frost Brood Coors Light Freeze Cam. Joe Creedy will lead things off for the Twins in the sixth against a new Seattle pitcher. There he is. The guy in the black shirt's bringing a course light down to him during the game. <laughs> Well, Roy Corcoran coming in at a ball game, 28 years old, in his second season with the Mariners. Last year, 50 relief appearances out of the bullpen, six and two, with a very good 3.22 earned run average. Creedy pops the first pitch up behind first. Brandon chasing it. Lopez is over there, and he makes a fair ball catch. One pitch, one out. You can make sure your wardrobe is regular season ready by logging on to twinsbaseball.com for the best in spring training gear, including hats, t shirts, and jerseys, or regular season gear for that matter. Gear up from the source at twinsbaseball.com, where baseball is always in full swing. Here's Delman Young. There's a strike on the inside corner. Oh, those are the numbers I was talking about Corcoran last year. Only allowed one home run in the 50 relief appearances. Good sinker baller, slider type pitcher. No swing, says Eric Cooper, one and one. But right at the second baseman, Lopez over to Brandon, two down. Hey, before we uh, get too far uh, 
deeply uh, into this ball game. We want to pass along our best wishes to the many, many friends and uh, the family of radio legend Steve Cannon, who passed away last night. Steve, uh, of course, a fixture on WCCO radio so for so many years. Fought a brief and valiant battle against cancer. He lost that battle last night. Our condolences to his family. It was my pleasure years ago to do some work over at the CCO radio, and I got a chance to meet and know Steve just a little bit. And what a what a great man, and what a great baseball fan. He was a big Twins fan. That hit well to left field, but right at the left fielder Chavez. Gomez is retired. And Corcoran turns in a 1 2 3 6. Nothing ball game. And then in the fourth inning, a couple more runs scored by the Mariners. Eddie Chavez with a big two run single. But the Twins did not give up. Three runs off of Eric Bedard in the bottom of the fifth inning. The biggest a two out. Base hit scored a couple runs off the bat of Michael Kadire. Franklin Gutierrez will lead things off against uh, Matt Guerrero starting the seventh inning. Well, Guerrero, those are his numbers from last year. Worked in last night's ball game, one third of an inning. Gave up a hit to Lopez that scored a couple runs through seven pitches, five for strikes. Line to Creedy, one away. Guerrero had to clean up the ninth inning or try to anyway after first Jesse Crane then Craig Breslow had some control issues. Well, Creedy playing off the line playing perfectly. As Gutierrez hits that line drive out to him. And now Griffey. Blackburn got him on a changeup in the first inning with a couple of men aboard. Got him to pop up to Casilla and then walked him twice, once in the third, once in the fifth. And a breaking ball over, one and one. Yeah, Matt has four pitches, a fastball, good control of the fastball, the slider, you just saw the curveball, and the changeup. Wide of the plate, two and one. Little roller to the right side to see it. To Morno, two down. And that'll bring up Beltre. So Umber pitched a fairly clean sixth, and now Guerrero off to a good start in the seventh. Beltre's driven in a pair tonight with a sacrifice fly and single. Thumbs and Mariners will see a lot of each other. Ten of the first 57 games. All ten times these two teams meet will be in roughly the first third of the season. Last year, they didn't face each other until the last third of the season. Chopper, Creedy charges, gets the second hop, and fires to Morno. Very good inning for Matt Guerrero. A one, two, three inning on just eight pitches. Strong, live bold, live now. Dodge, grab life. And by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Mountain Dew fan of the game. There you go, young lady. You are here by circle. And Jose Morales will lead things off in the seventh against Corcoran. Corcoran had a quick one, two, three. Sixth inning, he threw just six pitches to get the three outs. Morales now as a left handed batter. Struck out twice as a right handed batter against Eric Bedard. Try 
starting to think the other day of switch hitting catchers that the Twins have had. Probably the most recent Matt Walbeck, Butch Weiniger, of course. Mm -hmm. And I got stuck there. One and one. Sliced foul over the head of Scotty Elger. I'm trying to think too. I don't remember any other. George Mitterwald was a right handed batter. Right -handed, early bat, Earl Batty, of course, a right handed hitter. Brian Harper, a righty. Tim Laudner was here before. He's a right handed batter. One and two to Morales. And he grounds one up the right side. Morales getting the call, if you will, over Drew Butera as the backup catcher. And how extensively he'll be used, I suspect, is going to be determined. By how Mike Redmond feels tomorrow. One and two. Two and two. It would stand to reason that the Twins will, let's say they come back with Morales again tomorrow, and then Mike Redmond, if he's available, would be able to catch the Thursday afternoon game. Two and two. Lifted down the left field line, and that'll twist back and beyond the reach of the speedy Chavez. Well, Morales, 26 years old from Puerto Rico. We talked about it. He was a September call up in 2007, went three for three, then broke his ankle sliding into second base. That still kind of gave him a lot of problems last year where he was in Triple A Rochester. He hit 315, but his Season was cut short because of an ankle strain back in June. Another 2 2 to the Twins catcher. Struck him out. So Morales has fanned all three times swinging here tonight. One away. A good sinker right there by Corcoran down and away. Good movement. Eric Bedard got him on a couple breaking balls in here. Well, they got a little late movement on that good two seam sinking fastball in a perfect spot. So now Punto, Twins got their big two out hit from Kadire, and since then they've gone 0 for 5. Morno struck out. Corcoran has retired the four men he has faced. Punto takes a strike. He was hit by a pitch and scored in the three run fifth. The Detroit bullpen collapsed. The Blue Jays got five late runs and beat the Tigers 5 to 4. Just off the corner, and it's one and one. Well, who's our closer now? Is it Brandon Lyon? Lyon? That's an area that I think Detroit's going to struggle all season long. Is their pitching staff? Dontrell Willis on a disabled list. Bonderman on a disabled list. First time Jones retired. Zemaya on the disabled list. One and one to Punto. Two and one. Punto trying to get aboard. Twins were down four nothing, and they came up with a three spot in the fifth. Corcoran just missing that outside corner. Twenty three thousand seven hundred and fifty five here tonight after last night's crowd of just over forty eight thousand. There's the outside corner to fill the count. Punto's taking all five pitches.
three and two to the twin shortstop. Oh, what a catch by Bettencourt! A leaping stab of Punto's line drive. Well, and Nick, out number two. Yeah, he hit it hard right here, but that inside out swing created that ball to go back towards shortstop. And Bettencourt diving for it as that ball kind of sliced right back into his glove. Nice catch right there by Bettencourt for the second out of the inning. Very nice defensive play, leaving his feet, staying, keeping that ball in his glove. Here's Span, who drove in a run with a single in the fifth. And he takes a strike. Span maintained that even though he wasn't hitting much in spring training, that he'd be just fine, or hoped he would be fine come the regular season. And through a game and a half, 15 innings, whatever we've played so far, he's probably given the Twins the best. The most consistently good at bats. Drew a couple of walks last night, dropped down a sacrifice, a couple of hits tonight. Finds himself behind in the count now, 0 and 2. Takes a call, third strike. So Corcoran has another good inning. Six up, six down for the first Seattle reliever tonight. Tomorrow is Wednesday night. And Wednesday nights are still all about hot dogs again this year. Tomorrow, a Hormel Dollar a Dog Night presented by Country Hearth. Hormel Dogs for a buck apiece while supplies last limit. You hear this now? Two per customer. Hey, I just Peg just brought me up a dog. I'm fine. Come see the Twins and Mariners. Call 833 Twins. Visit twinsbaseball.com. Two per customer. That's okay, Peg Imhoff. Thank you very much for the hot dog. But what you need to do is bring a group of people who only want one, mm -hmm. and then you can have their other one. Want to know to Branion? Big uppercut swing and a foul. Remember when we uh, saw Brannion with the Brewers last year? There was so much talk about how he had reinvented himself as a hitter. With, and you can still see it—the more open stance, but the swing still seems to be his classic uppercut swing. Gobbled up by Casilla, and Brannion's retired. One away. Yeah, he's always been a player that has struck out a lot, and what they're hoping here in Seattle to do is cut down that swing a little bit, make more contact because he does have power. 133. Major League home runs, but he's only a career 230 hitter, so they want him to, to make just more contact. Do that, even though he made the out, do not strike out as much. Here's Jose Lopez, a walk, an 0 for 2 night going. And Guerrero sticks a fastball over the inside corner. Ball misses the outside corner. Matt in his sixth season with the Twins. Off speed pitch, lifted foul and out of play, one and two. Seattle lost over 100 ball games last year. This guy right here had a career year. Hit 297 and 159 games played. And as he swings through a high fastball, Matt Guerrero picks up a strikeout. He's retired all five batters he's faced so far. And that'll bring up Jojima. Ball almost had a little extra on it. As you saw that ball almost go right past the Swinging Lopez for a strikeout. Georgia, a couple of ground balls to the left side and a fly ball to center.
Mariners out hitting the Twins nine to six. That's to left center field. Gomez calls off Young, who ducks out of the way. Another one, two, three inning for Guerrero. Both relievers or both teams relievers doing well here tonight. The Toyota post game wrap. The art of the double play with Burt Blylevin and Ron Coomer, former twins, going to do the instructional, show you what happens on a double play. We'll talk about Carlos Gomez's swing adjustment, which tonight, thus far, has led to a triple and a run score. Scored plus, we'll get the reaction from the manager of the Minnesota Twins, Ron Gardenhire. That's all coming up following the game on Quest Twins Live, which includes a Toyota post game wrap. Dick and Burt, back upstairs to you. Thank you. I'll do the first name. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Robbie. You haven't tried his last name yet. No, no, I have not. It's Mikowski. Very good. Well, Alexi Casilla will lead things off for the Twins in the eighth against another Seattle pitcher, veteran David Ardsman. Yeah, Ardsman making his Mariner debut right here last year with the Boston Red Sox. Traded over the winter to the Seattle Mariners from the Red Sox. Last year, 47 relief appearances. Very high 5.55 ERA. This guy has a good fastball. Control has always been an issue. In 144 and two thirds major league innings, he's walked 90 guys. Casilla slaps one to center, and Gutierrez makes the catch one away. Yeah, that fastball clocked at 96. Ardsman with a good fastball. He'd get that fastball up to 98 at times. A knuckle curveball, slider, and a changeup. You said a veteran. He's been with the Giants, the Cubs, the White Sox last year with the Boston Red Sox. And an area that Seattle wants to improve, and that's their bullpen. We're hoping that Ardsman can be one of those arms out there. Two consecutive hits for Kadair, and he takes high and tight ball one. A bullpen right now that does not have a left-hander in that bullpen. All right-handers. Brandon Marl, their closer. He was warming up in the game last night till they scored a couple of ninth-inning runs. And two and zero. Oh, and you've got to wait Arjma out. If he can do as he did to Casilla and throw that first pitch over, well then the the rules change. But Kadair. Now with a 2 0 count. And an off speed pitch that he floats over for a called strike well, 2 and 1. It reminds me a little bit of a Grant Belfour, that type of arm. You know, it can just overpower the ball and overpower a hitter at times, but sometimes has lack of control. And Belfour found it, really. I mean, with the Tampa Bay Rays, he found his stuff. He finally hit the spot. And Arsenal 27 years old originally signed by the Giants number one pick out of Rice University Back three in 2003 and a fastball mid 90s fastball followed straight back by Kadair. Twins haven't seen too much of Arsma even though he was with the White Sox a couple of years ago the White Sox were where the Mariners are trying to improve the bullpen and they brought in two hard throwers Arsma and Mike McDougal. Three and two, and Kadair with a check swing. Strike three. He's called out on strikes. On a check swing, two down. Well, it looks like Michael went too far from this angle right here, but I'm way up high behind home plate. Take a look right here. Did he go too far? Well, he tried to keep the barrel over the bat. This will give us the true test right here. Boy, I don't think he went. Michael Kadair. Couldn't believe what Eric Cooper just told him. Morno looking for his first hit of the season. Has faced Ardsma three times and walked twice. Driven to right. Ballantine is there to make the catch. So Ardsma comes in and retires Casilla, Kadair, and Morno in quick fashion. Students with a valid ID can get into tomorrow night's game for just four dollars. It's Rasmussen College Student Nights presented by B96, and there's no cheaper ticket in town. Rasmussen College Student Ticket uh, Student Night Tickets 
must be purchased here at the dome. So you can call 833 Twins for further details. Luis Ayala, who pitched last night, pitched effectively, is asked to come in here and pitch a quick top of the ninth inning. Yeah, both both bullpens have pitched outstanding so far. Three shutout innings for the Twins between Umber and Matt Guerrero, and three shutout innings for the Seattle Mariner bullpen. Ayala last night threw 11 pitches, nine for strikes in a shutout inning. Did give up one hit in that six to one loss to the Mariners last night. Valentin will lead things off. His was the first of three consecutive singles with two out in the fourth that led to two big runs for the Mariners. And Ayala slings that first pitch over for a strike. Valentin, Bentoncourt, and Chavez to face Ayala here in the ninth. Oh and two. Earlier a question about who is going to be the setup man for the twins when the twins have a lead in the late innings. Ayala figures to be in the mix. I don't know that it's an absolute. Crane figures to get some opportunities there. Up high, one and two. With Ayala, you've got a veteran who last year was thrown into pressure situations with the Mets fading and needing a closer. He took the ball every time he was asked to take it. Down and in, two and two. He had nine saves for the Mets last year. Again, between the Nationals and the Mets, 81 relief appearances. So he was used a lot. In those 81 appearances, 75 and two thirds innings pitched. Two and two. Hit hard through the hole on the left side. A leadoff single for Ballantine, his second hit of the ball game. So Ballantine aboard, and that'll bring up Bettencourt. Bruce Hines, a third base coach for Seattle, give, going through a set of signs to Betancourt. There's Bruce Hines. And the same situation in the eighth inning last night when the Mariners were ahead four to one after a Jojima single. They did not have Betancourt bunt, and he bounced into a double play. Runner goes, a hit and run instead, and it's flared foul. So Ayala gets ahead of the number nine hitter. Popped up, foul ground, and Morales back near the net. And it's out of play. Two strikes. Ayala, like Crane, Morno, and Punto, missed part of camp because of the WBC. Playing from Mexico. Ayala signing as a free agent by the Twins. Fouled straight back. Bettencourt, like Lopez, not one to take a walk. Free swinger. Doesn't strike out all that much. Got him looking. So Ayala clips the inside corner for the first out of the night. Hey, he went with that two seam running fastball and. Good job by Morales right here, kind of holding it for a split second. And 
bringing it back in. Telling you, Mer Merriweather's only had trouble with the balls down the middle. The outer <laughs> He's half, called the corners. <laughs> yes, he has. One down, and here is Chavez. Squaring the bunt, taking a strike. Can the Mariners hope that along about the middle of the month they'll get Ishiro Suzuki back? Chavez through two games has filled in quite well for Seattle. One for four last night, three for four tonight. Morales, a fair ball catch, looked at second, throws to first instead. Too many people in the way. The pitcher, the second base umpire. I don't quite understand why Chavez is bunting right there when Betancourt was not asked to bunt. Morales comes out, as you mentioned, he thought about second, but make sure you get an out in that situation, and he throws it to Morneau for the second out. So a runner at second, two away, and Gutierrez. No sacrifice, of course, for Chavez. And the strike. Gutierrez hit a line drive to Creedy his last time up. To center field, a base hit. Gomez charges around third. Ballantine will score, and the Mariners get a huge insurance run in the ninth. And Gutierrez comes up with another big hit in this series. Well, left the ball up right there. Gutierrez taking right back up the middle. That big two run home run in the sixth inning of last night's ball game, a little insurance run as he drives in his third run of the year with his second hit of the ball, ball, ball game. So, as unexpected as that little bunt was by Chavez, it did advance a runner into scoring position, and the Mariners get another big two out hit. Well, they kind of did it backwards, but it worked. Yep. Four of their five runs tonight have been driven in with two out hits. Griffey to center field. Gomez back to end the inning. Instead of a one run lead, it'll be a two run lead for Brandon Morrow as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Well, the Seattle Mariners, they scored early. One in the first, one in the third, two in the fourth to take a four nothing lead. Twins came fighting back with three in the bottom of the fifth. But that big insurance run in top of the ninth makes it a five to three Seattle lead. Gutierrez getting that big RBI single with two outs. And Brandon Morrow coming in, the new closer in Seattle. Like, uh, the Mariners have known exactly what to do with this guy. In fact, as recently as the middle of March, he was going to be their number three starter. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of a forearm strain. And uh, he uh, will start the season as their closer. There were a number of other candidates. But Morrow's been handed the job. He had some experience at this last year. He got 10 saves when J.J. Putz was on the shelf. Well, they're almost doing to him what Boston did with Papelbon. You know, Papelbon wanted to start, and he ended up spring training a couple years ago, going to be a starter, and they had no reliever. So he relieved, and now he's one of the game's best. Here's Creedy to start the bottom of the ninth. Twins down a pair. He throws hard. You can see that 94 miles per hour and hitting the corner for strike one. Good fastball, split finger, hard slider, and a changeup. 
Fouled back. Morrill, the number one pick by the Mariners in 2006 out of University of Southern California. Drafted ahead of, among others, of course, Tim Lincecum. Who won the National League Cy Young Award last year. Two strikes to Creedy. Fouling it back. Creedy with a double in the fourth. Fan, I guess, made a nice catch. I need to correct myself. He's out of University of California. That is up in Berkeley area, not not USC. Oh and two to Creedy. The screen clocked at 99 miles per hour. Mentioned he had a forearm strain. He's also been uh, diagnosed as a type one diabetic. And for an assortment of reasons, the Mariners made the move. Greedy skies one near the Seattle dugout. And just over the railing and out of play. I remember Baltimore Orioles. Jason Johnson mm -hmm. was a yep. diabetic. Yep, and he uh, Johnson carried that what insulin pump yep. under his uh, belt line. Mm -hmm. Mark Lowe, the Mariners, also pitching out of their bullpen, is another diabetic. Lowe was just recently diagnosed. Morrow in high school. Grady strikes out one away. So one gone, and that'll bring up Delman Young. We talked about the good fastball. There's the slider right there. You can see how quick that dips. And Grady. Was a strikeout victim, the 11th twin to go down on strikes. Excuse me, the 12th. Young 0 for three, a strikeout once, a couple of ground balls surrounding his strikeout, and he takes ball one. Twins don't have much history with Morrow. He didn't pitch against the Twins last year. There is some uh, left handed uh, pop available for the Twins to pinch hit with Kubel and Busher on the bench, but now down two runs until, unless or until the Twins get a runner aboard, Ron Gardenhire might not make a bench move. One and one. That run the Mariners got in the top of this inning so huge for them in that. Pretty young, and if the Twins can work their way through the bottom of the lineup here, big difference being down by two runs rather than one. To right center field, Gutierrez in the gap makes the catch. Fairly well hit ball for out number two. Well, the Mariners playing without Ishiro, but. West player of the game, his replacement. Yeah, Eddie Chavez having a good day at the plate. Three hits, a couple RBIs, has scored a couple runs, stolen base. That was a big one there, that two out single in the fourth inning that scored two runs and made the lead at the time four to nothing. Last hope for the Twins and Carlos Gomez with Jose Morales on deck. Outside a ball. Jason Kubel's in the on deck circle. So if Gomez can somehow get aboard, keep the game alive, Jose Morales will come out and then Mike Redmond will be asked to catch. High and tight. 2 0. Oh. Control has at the major league level been an issue for Morrow. And he misses to Gomez 3 0. 84 walks in 128 innings. So, as hard as he throws and as wicked as that breaking ball is, he, like Artsma, has had a history of 
having his control slip away from him. Three and zero. Oh. Right down the middle. And that's exactly where the next pitch will be. So Favre talking to Nick Punto. Three and one to Gomez. Big swing on this to fill the count. And that one run lead Dick right here again it's going to be a fastball pretty much right down the middle of the plate. He doesn't walk anybody he sets his fingers up for that split finger but it's going to be another fastball guaranteed. And Gomez spins it back to the net. Hoping to get his designated hitter in the game as a pinch hitter. Kubel in the on deck circle. And a pitch sailing up and in, and Gomez got a piece of it. Well, he said at home and say, boy, he swung at ball four because the ball was up and in, but on three two, you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to take call third strike. You want to be aggressive at the plate. Morrill's just trying to rear back and let it go right down the middle of the plate. Another 3 2 to Gomez. Nearly hit him and he's aboard. Gomez will get Kubel to the plate, representing the tying run. Morales had struck out three times swinging. Now, Kubel, a designated hitter in last night's ball game, one for four. One pinch hit home run. Fans haven't had much to stand for. They're standing, many of them are, for this at bat. Gomez runs. Kubel takes. And here comes Rick Adair. Rickadere just going to come out here and try to settle him down, get him back down in the strike zone. Just rushing a little bit too much. A little pat on the behind. So stay down, trust your stuff. They're standing. They love extra innings. Even though they've got to go to school tomorrow. Two and zero. Oh. Nathan warming up in the event there is an extra inning. Punto on deck. Little anxiety in the Seattle dugout. Wider than the first three pitches and back to back walks will get Busher to the plate hitting for Punto. Punto 
0 for 2. He'd been hit by a pitch and scored. So the first two men retired, although Young hit the ball fairly well. And now back to back two out walks, and Busher comes up representing the winning run. Off the bench for the Twins. Brendan Harris is going to run for Jason Kubel. So Ron Gardenhire making in essence every bench move he can make here hoping that the one player left available will catch the 10th inning. That's Mike Redman. Well, the outfield for Seattle playing deep no extra base hits. Will allow Harris to score from first ball one. And Morrow hasn't gotten close to the strike zone since he won Gomez. Last night he may pitch tonight. Miguel Batista. There's a strike one and one. Well, you almost have to take a strike right there after that ball four to Gomez and four fastballs out of the out of the strike zone to Kubel. Now Busher ready and looking for that fastball. How about a wild pitch? Busher had a great spring. Hit 393 in the spring with a couple home runs. Breaking ball, not close. Two and one. Anything to get Harris into scoring position, where just a single could tie the game. Two and one to Brian Busher. Two and two. I think, Dick, what we've seen the last couple of hitters is that fastball that was at once at 96, now about 91. He's trying to aim that ball over the plate. Twins again down to their last strike tonight. Low and they're full and the runners will leave early. The count is full. And Gomez will leave early from second. Harris from first with Span on deck. To Brian Busher. Foul back. And Morrow will have to reload. Busher came to camp leaner this year. Worked very hard again to win a spot. Trying to come up with a big early season hit. They're loaded up for Denard Span. Three straight, two out walks. And the time run is in scoring position. 
and Morrow will be unable to complete his first save opportunity. Akamatsu coming out to make a pitching change. Miguel Batista will try to save it for the Mariners. And now Miguel Batista, who four years ago was a closer for the Blue Jays, will try to pin it down for Seattle. Yeah, he saved 31 ball games that year. And since he's become a Mariner, he's kind of been a starter, reliever, and now he's asked to get a save here. Span on the night, two hits and four at bats. The tying run at second. Strike on the outside corner. Batista worked in last night's ball game, the ninth inning after Felix Hernandez worked the first eight. A shutout ninth, but he did give up a base hit to Joe Creedy with a strikeout. Through 18 pitches. One strike to span. Chopper to third. Beltre has no play. And Span gets his third hit. And it's a 5 4 game. Well, Denard Span picking up another RBI, his second of the ball game. And Beltre did the right thing right here. Another high chopper. That hit on that hard ground right in front of home plate. And Beltre, if he gets this ball and maybe throws across the diamond, maybe it thrown it away. That's again where that run that the Mariners scored in the top of the ninth inning, a huge run. So now Casilla, four straight batters have reached. Span, the only one to put the ball in play. Casilla looking for his first hit. Driven to center field, a base hit. Harris scores. Busher is going to come home, and the Twins win it. <laughs>